Spotify officially announced another price increase on Monday. Now, this has been rumored for a little while now, but they are actually pushing through that price increase to all of their plans, especially in the U.S. That's the most important market from a financial perspective. And this should do a lot to help the company's profitability and cash flow. Over the past year, 18 months, the company has really done a good job of keeping its operating costs under control, continuing to grow the number of users, the number of premium users in particular. That's still what drives the company's financials and now continues to raise prices. So this is one of the main levers that they can use to increase operating income and ultimately free cash flow. So I'm going to go through the details today and how this is going to impact the company's financials. The chart that I really want you to see will come later on. That's the company's free cash flow chart. Just a tremendous increase over the past year. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's look at the announcement today. This is the official announcement, June 3rd, 2024. You can see that they are increasing prices to an individual plan, $11.99. Duo is going to be $16.99. Family, $20. And student, $6 per month. Now, what they said is this is going to roll out over the next month. Subscribers will get an email explaining what this update means for their subscription. And then there will be a month grace period on top of that. So by the fourth quarter, we should see a lot of these price increases start to roll out. That's when I would expect the financial impact on revenue, cash flow, and things like that. Now, the market is having a pretty positive reaction. Shares are up 4%. And I'm recording this pre-market on Monday. And this should really be no surprise because Spotify has been on a march to better profitability, better margins, operating margins, and free cash flow over the past year. So they're pushing more on that leverage, really flexing their pricing muscle. And if this is successful, I think it will be. This will show that they do have pricing power in the market. They're going to be able to bundle more products together. That's something that we're going to see more of over the next couple of years. And their free cash flow should increase. I have said that they could get to a billion dollars in quarterly free cash flow by the end of this year. This is the kind of move that will make that possible. Let's go through a couple charts that show this operating leverage in action. In green, you have gross profit. Now, gross profit for Spotify is going to be about 30%, 25 to 30% of their revenue. They have to share about 70% of their revenue with record labels, primarily record labels right now, but also publishing studios for books, basically content producers. They don't own their content. They're basically renting it from someone else. So that's why those suppliers do have pricing power in the market. So they're able to command about 30% of revenue. But gross profit is going up as revenue increases. What has been a challenge for Spotify, if you go back to the December 2022 numbers, and these are all trailing 12-month numbers, you can see that Spotify's operating costs were increasing much more quickly than their gross profit was. That's Operating leverage in action, but it's in action in the wrong direction. What you want to see is revenue and gross profit increasing faster than your operating costs are increasing. So as you see the blue and orange columns, that's the SG&A and R&D expenses come down over the past year, you're also seeing gross profit go up. That is how you get operating leverage in the business. And this is why Spotify stock has done so well, because they've been cutting costs as their profits have actually increased. What has that meant for free cash flow? This is the chart that I think every investor needs to know about Spotify. Free cash flow bottomed basically middle of last year. And again, these are trailing 12-month numbers. Over that period of time, and this is as gross profits have increased and operating expenses have come down, you have seen that free cash flow has just shot higher and the stock has responded as well. This is exactly what investors want to see. They want to see that you've reached scale. They want to see that you have pricing power. They want to see you have operating leverage. And that's exactly what I, and that's exactly what Spotify is starting to prove with its business. I do want to show this free cash flow chart in one more way, and that is with quarterly numbers. One of the odd things about Spotify's business is that their quarterly numbers can be extremely volatile, especially from a cash flow perspective, because there is cash flow changes for when payments are made for royalties when revenue comes in the door, when price increases hit, all of these things impact cash flow. So if you look at that trailing 12 month numbers, that smooths out some of the cash flow volatility. But you see with this chart, there is a ton of volatility, but we are probably going to see Spotify go over a billion dollars in trailing 12 months free cash flow next quarter. So when the second quarter 2024 results are announced, by the end of 2024, I think this number is going to be even higher. And these price increases are just going to be a driver of that. Maybe we don't get to a billion dollars in free cash flow per quarter, 
but we are going to be significantly higher than we are today. And so this is one of the biggest reasons to be bullish on Spotify is they are flexing some pricing power and operating leverage in the business. But that's not the only thing to like about the company right now. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. One of the things that we did not see change with the current announcement anyways was changes to the bundling that Spotify has been doing with audiobooks. You can see here their premium pricing plans, 15 hours per month of listening to audiobooks from the subscriber catalog. So you get that with individual, duo, and also family. The next phase of growth for Spotify is really leaning into those bundles. So audiobooks is something that they bundled reportedly had a lot of success. They've talked a little bit of, a lot about this on the conference calls could help increase margins just a little bit, but it's not really clear how much time sp people are spending using audiobooks. Are they getting a ton of value out of that? There has been reports that they were going to split some audiobooks into kind of their own subscription. So you could have a bundled subscription, but there would be pricing for the two separately. It doesn't look like they're leaning in that direction right now. They're just leaning into the current model of including that 15 hours per month. I think there are a couple of opportunities to bundle even more products together with Spotify. Music with audiobooks like, makes a lot of sense. Podcasts, they're still trying to monetize podcasts a little bit better. The advertising business is something that I've said that if they really get that right, that's what's going to send the stock significantly higher. That's why it's in my asymmetric investing portfolio. But also video. Video is something that you see popping up more and more if you use Spotify. What is the plan for that long term to monetize that in a little bit different way? Maybe use advertising a little bit differently. Maybe bundle some more premium content, whether that's podcasts or audiobooks or exclusive interviews. I don't know exactly what that looks like, but you're starting to see this Spotify platform and ecosystem really develop itself. It starts with music, expands to things like audiobooks and podcasts. Now we're having video be part of the picture as well. Advertising is something that have, hasn't really taken off yet. So Spotify is a, in a great position with increasing free cash flow, increasing operating leverage. And this is before some of these opportunities for growth really start to kick in. The stock's not cheap. As I'm recording, about a $60 billion market cap. So even if Spotify got to $2 billion in free cash flow on an annualized basis by the end of this year, it would still be trading for 30 times free cash flow. That's not a cheap stock by any means, but I still think there's a lot of runway of growth ahead for Spotify, a lot of opportunities to leverage their operations. We may be seeing price increases be done for a little, bit, little while now, but the company has really shown that it does have pricing power now I think the next step from a financial perspective is going to be leaning into that advertising business. But I love what I'm seeing from Spotify. It's been a phenomenal stock over the last year or so. Really rewarding investors, not only through the share price, but also with improvements in the fundamental business. So what do you think about Spotify today and their price increases? Maybe not the best as a user, but as a shareholder, definitely love what I'm seeing. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.